Lance Lambert tweeted this. In November of 24, seven of the 50 nation's largest metros had falling year-over-year home prices. Today, or as of the end of June, half, half have falling home prices. And believe it or not, Nashville just went negative. You can see it there. I think Zillow is probably a better measure of even the median price, which is what I cover. Here's the thing. Look at, look at Austin. Austin is down well over 5%. I'm so jealous of Austin. When when we started, when I started doing YouTube, I was doing YouTube because I wanted to cover the biggest housing crash in the world. And I thought it would be Nashville. I thought Nashville prices would crash. In fact, what has happened in Austin essentially is what I predicted to happen in Nashville. Now, here's what happened in Nashville instead. It was 100% wrong. Look at that. That's Nashville. Nashville's down 2% from the peak. And they've been going up really every year. You look at the lows, it's been going up every single year. This is the Zillow Home Value Index. And even now, if you look between May and June, prices actually went up. So why are they saying that prices are negative if they went up from May to June? And it really comes down to this, okay? This is the same measure, but this is Nashville over time, Starting in 2022, where we peaked out, I guess, at the end of June, July, uh, is when it peaked, uh, according to Zillow's home value index. And you can see here, this is where we're at. Last year, in June, prices were 458, 465, and now they're 457, 836, a whopping $600 drop. I'm as disappointed as, if you are a buyer and you're feeling disappointed by this, Just know I'm feeling disappointed by this. You think I want prices to be high? No. Anyways, there's there's your drop. There's your year over year negative. Completely unhelpful. That's an unhelpful chart. I got a text yesterday from uh, an agent I work with, and he asked me, he said, Ethan, what price bands have the most price cuts in them? Where, Where are we seeing the biggest fallout? And I thought, that's an interesting question. So of course, I stopped what I was doing, and I went down this rabbit hole of what's happening with price cuts. And I'm gonna share that information with you. I actually think it's going to be some of the most helpful information on the Nashville housing market you could have because just looking at price, it really isn't all that helpful. So so what's the deal, Ethan? What happened with price cuts? Well, when we look at price cuts in Nashville, here's what we see. The $300,000, under $300,000, almost half of the active listings have cut their price under $300,000. That is astonishing. I would have never, ever, I thought if you price it under 300,000, it would just fly off the shelves. To be honest with you, I don't spend much time in that market and this is single families. But the fact is, is that anything under 300,000 I thought would fly off the shelf. That is not what's happening now. In fact, what we're seeing now, those are the ones cutting their price the most, even though there's only 373 Almost half have cut their price. You go to the 300 to 500 range, you can see that 41%, and it really doesn't change between 300 and 750. It it doesn't change. But here's the other astonishing fact. If you go over one and a half million, first of all, there's almost 1,200 active listings over one and a half million. So when we look at the supply in Nashville, I mean, there's over 1,200 that are over one and a half million. So part of this, one of the smallest parts of the market with the highest months of inventory, there's only 370 cuts, 31%. Now, if you do look at this over time, which I think is important to do, here it is. If we do look at it over time, what we can see is that even though it's the least number of price cuts, they've been increasing all month long. Really, they bottomed in April and they've been rapidly increasing. We've also... <clears throat> see that the under 300,000, even though they're the highest percentage, they've actually kind of been bobbing up in the 45% range really all year. Now, what makes this interesting is they've been really high price cuts, but these, these more expensive tiers have all been creeping up at a pretty rapid pace. And that's why today, when we look at, at Nashville, price cuts, we see that 40% of active listings have cut their price. Now, why does this matter to you? Why does it matter if 40% of active listings cut their price? Well, if you think about it, most realtors 
listing agents do try to price something at market. They, they don't want to waste their time. They want things to move. And any time you get above that one third of the housing market or 35% of the housing market has cut their price, what you're seeing is, is that the listings are mispriced to the current market conditions. So the fact that 40% of all active listings have cut their price, listings are mispriced to the current market. Now, this should be exciting, and I think it will be on the second half of this year, but currently, prices have been going up. I thought it would change in July. It's, it's gone on two months longer than I thought it would go on. But I just don't see how this continues to build without it ending with prices dropping, at least in some tiers. By, by the way, these, these charts, look, I've got median sales price on here. This is Greater Nashville Realtors median sales price. So um, it's the same pool they use when they post at the end of the month, except for I just refresh it at pretty much every day, except for Sunday. I don't refresh it Sunday. Contract volume, daily refresh on contract volume. It tells you where demand is, supply. To me, these are the most important charts. I know y'all love price, so I added it. And then price cuts to me is, is probably as important as supply and demand is like how motivated are the sellers to move their properties. I have all of these on my website, NashvilleRealEstateData.com. All you have to do is create a free account. It's free to access the daily market charts. But let's take a look at some of these neighborhoods, which by the way, let me start down here at Troubadour. Troubadour is a $5 million neighborhood or $4.5 million neighborhood now. I guess prices are dropping. And Troubadour is, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I don't want to say it's crashing, but there were eight active listings last year with zero under contract. Now there's 12 active listings with zero under contract. Prices have been dropping in this area. Inventory has been building. Look at these, six and a half million. Uh, look at the price per foot though, 750. These haven't gone under 800 price per foot since February of 2022. So the fact that they've got uh, 750, I think this is a straggler. It's probably not in the neighborhood, but this right here, 750 a foot. Looks like $4 million is the floor in this neighborhood. So really that that's another way to measure it is, is by sales price. But let's take a look at another neighborhood. And just so you know, these color codes, this isn't, this isn't about supply, but it's about whether or not the neighborhoods are more competitive than they were the year before. So if they are red like this in this country club east neighborhood, you can see 11 active listings, one under contract, feels like 11 month supply. That was a year ago. Now nine active listings with five under contract feels like a two month supply. Well, we know there's more than a two month supply. In fact, uh, only about 11 close in this neighborhood per year. So the fact that five are under contract right now tells me that people are jumping in because of the time of the year, July, and they probably haven't ha found a place to land. They're probably trying to get into schools. And so they just had to pull the trigger. And let's be honest, this is one of the best locations that there is. It's right against 65 there. And so uh, with the price cuts, it's probably relatively attractive. And let's see what it is by sales price. Yeah, I mean, look, under contract. Yeah, going back to uh, 2024, only one closed lower than this. So you can actually see that prices are dropping even as we're making new highs or pushing on the old highs. Let me show you one other neighborhood where you can see the prices dropping and prices going up at the same time. It's just so weird. And that's one of the reasons I think, you know, these median values just don't do anything justice. But here's Charlotte Park. Charlotte Park is just north of 40, just on the west side of Nashville. It's just west of the Nations and Sylvan Park, really uh, growing area. And you can see lots of builds over here. Lots of build. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see these are making, look at that, 219,000. That must be a, no, that's a condo, 219,000. And you can see we are touching the bottom, the 200,000 mark. We are touching the bottom of pretty much anything that's sold in that neighborhood for years. Let's just look at new builds for a second. I think new builds kind of tell a story here. And we're going to go to sales price because that's really where it gets clear. Look at this. You can see prices continuing making new highs, continuing to make new highs, continuing to push. And now we've had, we've got a comp, a comp at 1.2 million, which, you know, I, I looked at this one a little bit. I'm kind of curious what kind of incentives they got. 
none reported. But nonetheless, they're making new highs. At the same time, we're seeing new lows being made in this neighborhood, Charlotte Park here. It's very fascinating. You can pick by size category if you want to zoom in on a very specific, like the smallest part of the market where the highs of, you know, 400 and 450 a foot no longer happening in this size. This is the same neighborhood, y'all. It's the same neighborhood. Supply active listings by price band. The, the lowest prices have the vast majority of supply. It's also building the slowest. So when we look at price cuts, we're seeing price cuts flat for that area. We're seeing inventory tighten up in that area where it's getting looser or on the more expensive uh, properties. I think post July, especially after you get through the school zone scurry, the rush to buy for the school zone, you're going to see some pretty interesting times to buy. Now, whether or not prices are going up or down in the future, obviously things look soft, but I don't know what's going to happen. So if you're wanting a price forecast, that's not something I do. If you just look at Zillow's chart, I mean, all you see is something that's really flat. Could it go down? It could. It's not, it doesn't feel like it's really changing all that much. The housing market is frozen solid. For now, this is where we're at. And I'd love to hear what you think is going to happen. What's going to happen on the back backside of this year? Are people going to hold out? Are they going to be stubborn as parcel labs call them? Or is there going to be a major change? I'll let you decide. And with that, thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Have a good day.